I finally tried the Poco X6 and the 6 Pro and between both of them, there's only one that I can actually recommend. You see, the Poco X6 was launched for $299 while the Pro version for $349. And when you see them side by side, well, they're quite similar. Even their screens are practically identical, but the design of the cameras is slightly different, as well as the edges of the back case which are rounder on the Poco X6 Pro, making it a little bit more comfortable to hold. Their fingerprint reader is also the same, positioned in the same place and both of them have two speakers for stereo sound, although only the X6 has an audio jack. All of this is quite nice, but when you grab them in your hand, especially with the case that comes with it, they're quite hard to distinguish since their design is very similar and we could say the same about the 120Hz AMOLED screen. Maybe this is why you might think that, well, it's a better choice to go for the cheaper one, but that would be a bad decision. Although before explaining you why, I found quite funny that in order to distinguish their cameras, they they simply use different external mounts on them, also on the macro, a sensor that both of them share and should have been spared. In any case, what I can assure you is that in terms of performance, only the X6 Pro is worth your money. To start, the performance difference in benchmarks is abysmal in some cases, especially when you see the results of its GPU. Just as an example, right now I'm playing Genshin Impact with the Poco X6 Pro. It's smooth, it's good, it's playable. But now with the X6, you know, it's not bad either, but I do notice some stutters from time to time. Even though you're not gonna play games on the phone, the difference in performance between these processors, it's incredible, like 50, 60% in some times. And for only $50 more, I do believe it's worth it. But if you're still not convinced, let me show you the results I obtained when doing two round speed tests that I usually do. While the X6 Pro got similar results than the Pixel 8 Pro and even better than the S23 FE, the Poco X6 was much worse, almost as bad as the Galaxy A54. And look, I even thought the Poco X6 came with the Snapdragon 7 Gen 2, but it's actually the 7S, which is on a lower ranking and quite similar to the Snapdragon 778G. But if this was not enough, the Pro version come with UFS 4.0 storage, which is much faster than the one on the X6. In other words, if you get the Poco X6, it's almost as getting the Poco X5 Pro from last year. Although, if you get the Pro version, you're gonna get a performance very similar to that of the Poco F5 Pro. So it's not only the processor, but also the storage speed. And both of these things for only $50 more? Dude, yeah, you got me. Look, if I still haven't convinced you about getting the Poco X6 Pro instead of the regular one, at least let Xiaomi do it, since the X6 come with Android 13 on MIUI 14, while the X6 Pro already has Android 14 on HyperOS. It is true that the first one is able to perform for day-to-day -day tasks. I mean, I'm even surprised of how fluid it is. But in two or three years, when Xiaomi has forgotten about you, having a better processor will help you get a better experience. And look, even if this gets like three or four years of updates, that doesn't mean that they're gonna get better optimized. Otherwise, they would have already solved the problem of the virtual proximity sensor that plagues both devices. It's a shame that the X6 has such a different performance because it also features fast charging up to 67 watts with the charger that comes in the box and the battery life in both of them is quite good. And the reason why this is so important, it's because the processor is like the heart of a phone. It's used on so many things, not only the screen and the performance, but also in the cameras. Because even though they have the same main sensor, the results are quite different, with the X6 having a worse dynamic range in general, but also losing focus more frequently. And to be honest, it even seems like the price difference between both of them is much larger when you see these photos. With the wide angle lens, well, the difference is not so substantial and the same happens with the front facing camera. The most curious thing is that in video mode, I end up preferring the colors of the X6 for being a little bit more natural with better shadows and not as saturated as the Poco X6 Pro. It's as if that extra power is being used to optimize the video in some way, but such optimization makes it look less natural. Anyway, I think that when walking, we can see how the X6 struggles a little bit more, even though both of them have optical stabilization, which, once again, it demonstrates that it's important to have a good processor. With all of this said, I think that I've explained myself on why the Poco X6 Pro is the best phone you can buy. 
I mean, even right now, you can get it for $250. That's a steal for all of this, everything that you're getting. And to be honest, I think the real question we should be making is that if this phone is better than the Galaxy A54 or even the Redmi Note 13 Pro Plus. But I will respond to those questions in other videos. Anyway, I hope you like this review. If you have any questions or a different opinion, please leave them in the comments. I see you in the next one. Ciao, ciao.